morning and welcome to South Point, where we're one church in two locations. So we want to say good morning to our Lusby campus. We want to say good morning to our Leonardtown campus. Happy Easter. We are so glad that you chose to be here with us this morning. Hey, we're here in this beautiful traditional church shooting this video, and they've probably done some similar things here in this church like we're going to do today for Easter. I bet they sang some songs in churches like this, like we're going to sing some songs. I bet they celebrated like we're going to celebrate today. I bet they heard a message, and today we're going to hear a message. And I bet people sat in the pews for some of the same reasons that you're here today. For some of you, you showed up today, this Easter, because it's a family tradition. You don't really know why it's a family tradition, but you're here because it is. Others of you, you showed up because it's a social event where you get to be seen and you get to see other people. For some, it's a religious box that you feel like you have to check, so you showed up today. For others, you kindly said yes to an invitation and someone had asked you repeatedly and you graciously showed up. We're so glad that you're here today. And others have a personal relationship with Jesus and are here to celebrate Him. But regardless of why you're here, we are glad that you showed up today. Now here's what's mind-boggling, is that for centuries, all over the world, on different continents, in different languages, and in all kinds of different churches. People have been getting together, showing up to celebrate Easter, just like you did. And regardless of the reasons why they showed up or why you showed up, we are so glad that you're here with us today. But the important question is why? What's so important about this day? And so this morning, we want to ask two questions that have the potential to change our lives. The first question is, who do you say Jesus is? And the second is, why does it matter? I mean, most of you in this room or most people that show up on Easter probably agree with the majority of historians that say Jesus existed. But I know that there are all kinds of people who believe different things about Jesus. Some people believe that Jesus, well, he was just a good man. Some people believe Jesus was a great teacher. Some people believe Jesus was one of those prophets of old, or maybe that Jesus was just one of those kind healers. But you know what? Life is too short. What stake is too important. Time is too limited for you and I to live life outside the four walls of this church for just a good man, if Jesus was just a great teacher, if Jesus was just some prophet of old, or Jesus was just some kind healer. What if I told you the reason that we're here today and why for over 2,000 years people have regularly been gathering in places like this and at South Point is because of one thing, an unmovable stone that had never been moved all of a sudden was moved. You see, this unmovable stone, it re represents the bustedness and the brokenness of this world. And the reality is, if we were honest with each other, this busted and brokenness, well, we can't fix it. And it's beyond our ability to control. And this busted and brokenness of the world, well, it happens to all of us. It happens to me. It happens to you. And it also happened to Jesus. Matter of fact, we see this in the eyewitness account of the Gospel of Mark in Mark 15, uh, 43. We pick it up. Now, Jesus has been unjustly condemned. He's been crucified. He's dead. And this is where we pick it up. Verse 43, Joseph of Arimathea, a prominent member of the council, he himself was waiting for the kingdom of God. He went boldly to Pilate to ask for the body of Jesus. But Pilate was surprised to hear that he was already dead. And so Pilate, summoning the centurion, asked him, Is Jesus already dead? And when he learned from the centurion it was so, he gave the body to Joseph. And so Joseph took the body down, and he bought some grave clothes, and he wrapped them in linen, and he took the body down, and he placed it in a tomb cut out of rock. And then he rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb, and Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Jose, saw where it was was laid. And here's the amazing thing. Jesus hadn't done anything even remotely worthy of death. Actually, Jesus was what was right with the world. I mean, he invited the outcast. He healed the hurting. He protected the weak, and he loved the unlovable. Yet, the unmovable stone, the brokenness of this world, does what it did. 
And when they rolled that stone across his tomb, it was a symbol of all that's wrong in this world had won. And we pick it back up in Mark 16. It says, When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, had bought spices so they might anoint the body of Jesus. You see, in that culture, they believed when someone was dead, you need to anoint them. They, they, didn't, they didn't think that Jesus was going to rise because no one had ever moved that stone before. And so very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb. And they asked a question that I believe every single person asks in life. They asked, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? You see, Mary and Mary, they had loved Jesus. They had followed Jesus. They had believed in Jesus. And he was dead, but they wanted to do something good and right. They simply wanted to, to give him a proper burial. But there was something in the way of giving him a proper burial. It was an unmovable stone. And their story is our story. You see, there's some good and right things that all of us want in our life. But often as we chase and pursue those things, we end up or experience an unmovable stone. Think about it. No matter your age, no matter your race or your culture or your status, there are three things that every single person wants. They want friends and fun. We all want family. And we all want purpose. But we often end up with an unmovable stone as we pursue those things. things that we should pursue is friendship and fun. I mean, God created us to be connected in relationship and with the ability to experience enjoyment. I mean, friendship is where someone knows us and not just the outside of us, but all of us, the flaws included. And we know them and their flaws and we still like each other. And enjoyment is like air in our lungs in the grind of life. Those two things are so simple, yet isn't it amazing something so easy like those two things can get complicated so fast. We all want and need friends. And when it comes to friends, we often have the best intentions. But as we go through our friendships, different things come in and out. Maybe it's a misunderstanding, or maybe it's words said in anger that you can't take back and that leaves a scar. Or maybe it's that reactive social media post that creates division. Or maybe there's a move and there's a distance that ends up creating separation. Or maybe there's a hurt that goes unforgiven. Maybe for you it was a mistake that you know that you should have fixed, but you didn't. For me, it's a story about my good friend, Mark. Mark and I were best of friends. Matter of fact, he and I used to get together about every other week. And we would get together over a meal or a cup of coffee and we'd share what was going well and we'd share what was going wrong and we'd encourage each other. And every once in a while, our families would get together, our wives, and we'd all go out and have dinner. I mean, it was one of those life-giving friendships that you go, man, this is what life was meant for. But then he and his wife moved away and we, we committed to like staying in touch and, you know, keeping our friendship strong. But, you know, the first couple months we, we kept connected on phones and, and then, you know, through social media on Facebook. But as the years passed, the connection kind of went away. And as I look back on that friendship, I go, man, distance won and a good friendship was lost. You know, something as simple as a life-giving friendship can be gone. Now when it comes to fun, we go, what could be more simpler than fun, right? Yet sometimes if we were really honest, it's our hobbies or our cravings or our desires that once promised to bring us fun and pleasure become this habit that we have to have. And then the price tags become something that we should never pay. And what feels good, if we are really honest, is no longer good for us or good for anyone around us. I mean, no one ever starts out thinking, I'm going to be that person. And that craving or that desire or that habit that was meant to add 
all of a sudden becomes an addiction that harms the very life that we want or were meant to have. And then sometimes, either our friendships or our fun, an unmovable stone can show up. Family, we're all meant to be a part of one. It's one of those good things in life that we all want. Matter of fact, one of the greatest joys that you and I can experience in life is being a part of a healthy family. But the opposite is exactly true, is that if you and I experience dysfunction in family, it can be one of the most painful things that we ever experience. The odd thing is, is that for many of us, we experience both extremes, some pain and some joy. Yep, family, it's something that we all pursue. Family, it's that one place that's supposed to be safe and good. Family is regardless of what happens around us, they're the shelter of unconditional love and support. And almost nothing else in life has the power to shape the foundation of our life and our soul like family. And our family memories, well, they're not easily forgotten. As we remember them, they evoke powerful emotions, which makes the old saying, if you can pick your friends but not your family, comes from the truth that many of us have experienced both the pain and the joy that comes from being part of a family. Maybe the pain that you've experienced, maybe it came from a sibling whose constant criticism and competitiveness and comparison still divides you today. For others of you, maybe it was a parent's dysfunction that caused a trail of chaos at every life stage that still hasn't ended. For others, family, it may be an adult child whose addiction has repeatedly broken your heart till there's nothing left to break. For others, maybe it's a spouse whose failure or abandonment has crushed your soul. For me, it was my half-sister. My half-sister was given up at birth and I didn't even know I had a sister until I was in my 30s. And then by a miraculous event, we got to meet. The problem was is that she showed up in my life in a time where my body was failing and my soul was empty. And what meant to be something good where we would have a reunion, it would be life-giving, well, it was very brief. She has an addiction and she moved on and I went on. And well, it just didn't end the way that we thought. You know, family's meant to be an unshakable place, but sometimes, we can end up with an unmovable stone and something that was meant to be good and right. When it comes to purpose, everyone wants to have one. It's one of those good and right things in life that we should pursue. And whether it's having a career, or maybe it's raising a family, maybe it's both. Or for some of you, it could be something totally different. Whatever your job or career is, there's always dignity in work. You see, all of us want to do something that one, adds value, and two, gets noticed by others. If we are honest, we all want to bring something unique to the world that actually matters. But here's the tricky part. It's to balance this idea of making a living and making a life without confusing the two. And the reality is that's much easier to say and it's very hard to do. Now sometimes, despite our best efforts, things don't go the way we want as we're working our job or our career or whatever it is. Maybe we worked hard. Maybe we did our best but there was only one spot open for that role or for that promotion, and we didn't get it. Maybe things used to be great, but then all of a sudden you got a new boss, and things aren't the same. You get parted with a new coworker, and now it's hard to come into work every day. Maybe for others, your position or your role is getting phased out, 
or maybe you just got plain laid off. You know, my story of something like that happening to me comes from my days when I was younger. I used to work with this company, and matter of fact, there was this guy in our church, his name was Jay. He actually got me this job, and he was an executive vice president, and, and I had an entry-level job, and I wanted to do good to show him I was thankful, and, and I worked hard for a couple years. But eventually, after a couple years of hard work, I actually became a branch manager um, with five employees, and we had millions of dollars worth of business that I was responsible for. And for a couple of years, I was doing really well. A new boss came in, and as they were evaluating the different branches, my, my branch came up, and they said um, they didn't think we were doing as good as we should have, so I kind of kind of got put on an action plan. Um, and after a year of hard work, I thought we had done everything we could, and we should be able to stay open. Uh, but I was notified that they were going to close our branch, and that our employees would not have jobs, and I would be kind of moved on to a different role. And to be honest, I felt like a failure, even though I had worked as hard as I could. The reality is, is sometimes as we try to make a life by making a living, you and I can end up with an unmovable stone. Pursuing good and right things, such as fun and friends, family and purpose, it's normal for all of us to do. If you've experienced an unmovable stone, you're not alone. It's something we've all had to deal with. Matter of fact, at the very first Easter, Mary and Jesus experienced the unmovable stone that represents the bustedness and brokenness of this world. Now here's the hard part. Here's the sticky thing. It's the part that we don't want to admit, but that we know deep down is true. This unmovable stone, it doesn't just exist outside of us, it also exists on the inside of us. The reason the world is busted and broken is because it's filled with imperfect and flawed people. And I'm one of them. What's wrong on the outside is just a reflection of what's wrong on the inside. It's where pride and envy, lust, greed, rage, jealousy, and selflessness starts. These things are all things that we've been guilty of. And no matter how hard we try, perfection is really out of our reach. There's an unmovable stone that lives in our hearts that we can't fix. And so you and I are left asking the very same question Mary asked all those centuries ago. Who will roll away the stone in our lives that we can't? Answering this question, question might be the most important question we ask. The answer to our question, the answer to Mary's question, is found in the rest of the Gospel of Mark 16. You see, it doesn't end with verse 3. It continues on to verse 4. It says, But when they looked up, and they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away, and they entered the tomb, and that they saw a young man dressed in white and a robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said, don't be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See the place where they had laid him. But go tell the disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. And there you will see him just as he told you. You see this very large stone, this unmovable stone that they could not move, had been moved for them. It was already rolled away. God did what they could not. Not only had the large stone been rolled away, but the tomb was empty. Jesus wasn't there. I mean, Jesus had predicted that he'd be unjustly condemned. Jesus told him that he would be crucified and died and buried. And he proved that he was God's son by rising from the dead. The tomb was empty. And lastly, the unmovable stone, the brokenness and bustedness of this world, 
death and hell had been conquered. The one stone, the unmovable stone that no one had been able to move had been moved by this one named Jesus. You see, God did for us what we could not do for ourselves. And this is where we discover who Jesus is and why it matters to us. We're here today not to remember a good man, even though that's what Jesus was. We're not here to pass on these ideas of a great teacher, even though Jesus was a great teacher. We're not here to honor a prophet of old, even though that's what Jesus was. And we're not here today to memorialize a kind healer, even though Jesus was that. No, we're here for much more than that. Because what good would it be if Jesus couldn't move the stone for us? even if he did all those things. You see, the very people that bring us the Jesus that the world knows, all of them share the same message. And it was that Jesus was more than a good man or a great teacher or a prophet, that he was the one who had been dead, but now is alive. Jesus is more than someone that should be remembered. He's God's one and only son who came to conquer hell and death so that you and I could have that stone, that unmovable stone, move so that you and I could experience life. And this is available to anyone who wants to experience it, the kind of life worth living forever.